<clears throat> All right, so let's try something a bit different, especially different for me. Um, if you haven't seen the video already, I built this too, the Warhammer Plus exclusive model, um, the essentially war boss dude. Um, Baz Droog. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so let's see how it works out. But we're essentially going to paint him. I'm going to show you my style of getting this guy done. I'm going to stop playing with that. So yeah, let's check it out. See how it works. Alright, so, first things first. Here is Baz Droog. Neck Chopper. The War Boss Orc from the Warhammer Plus um, exclusive line. Look. I knew everyone else was going to be essentially picking the assassin. I wanted something a little bit different. That's why I chose this guy. So here we go. Um, all I've done is so far given him a spray of gray all over. Um, just any gray, just out of a rattle can. And then I just went over the top with a lighter gray. Um, I Look, Xenothal highlighting is up to you guys. I honestly never see a difference, but that's just me. You know, other people can say they can see it, but there we go. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to do the skin because it's the lowest part possible and to try and get into some little spots before um, doing some other things, we might as well do that first. So first color we're going to need. I'm going to start with some Death World Forest. Um, I don't want these guys being super, super bright green, um, which I've done before with the Blood Bowl starter kit. Um, I want these guys to be a little bit different kind of green, so I'm going to start with some Death World Forest. Alright, as you can see, I've just got a little plastic plate. I'm not using my uh, wet palette for this just yet, just because it's... Um... Oh, I'm not doing detail work, so this is going to get pretty sloppy, so I'm just taking some of my Death World Forest, and I'm just going to start picking out where the skin is, so we're going to start doing things like the head. Get that all nice and over inside the neck there. Don't worry if you hit any other spots. We're going to be covering that. The hands, the arms, and inside of here. And more hands. And that little bit's in the back in there. So I'll come back when we've got all that covered. All right, and there we have it. Um, Remember, say it with me. Two thin coats. Um, so that is with the Death World Forest, just over the skin in the certain areas there. Um, yeah, real quick, nothing's too, you know, amazing. Now, at this point, most people would say slap a wash on and let it sit so that we know the highlights and places like that to do. Me personally, I like to add an extra highlight, then a wash, just with skin. That's just how I like to do it. And then another highlight after that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go and hit all the high points with some Elysian Green, and then apply a wash over that. So, give me a second, I'll get this all set up, which I should probably do, actually, before talking. But, either way, give me a sec. Boop. Okay, a little bit of Elysian Green there, a little bit of water just to thin it down, even though it doesn't need much, and I've got a nice fine tip on my brush here. So, what I'm going to do is, it's going to be easier on your hands and your big parts of the shoulders there. I'm not going to highlight every single thing. I just want to make some of the details pop a little bit just before the wash goes on. It just ties things together nicely before that final highlight. So I'm just going to hit things like the ears here. Around the face and jawline. Just broad strokes, just leaving some of that Death World Forest in the deepest, darkest parts. So I'm not going to go into the neck there. Um, things like the arm here, I'm just going to do a broad highlight across the flatter sections there. Just here. And on the hands. And there's a lot of little nice banding there. A little bit in the palm. 
Oh, and I'm just using a small layer brush to do this with. So I'm going to hit all this, and we'll come back. Boom! And that is the Elysian Green done for now. So as you can see in the arm here, you can still see where I've left the Death World Forest in certain spots. And it's almost like I've washed it without it. But in the really deeper parts, I haven't touched it at all. Just on the arms, the hands, you can see on the knuckle here, you know, and on the face. Just certain little bits here and there. Now, the weird part that a lot of people are probably going to get upset with, I'm not using a green wash. So, I'm actually going to be using Drakenhof Nightshade all over, but this on its own is way too strong. I would not use this straight out of the pot. A little bit of water, sure. I'm actually going to be mixing it with a little bit of Lamy Medium. It's going to be two to one. That's my favorite ratio with using these um, and doing this kind of thing. You can go three to one and do a couple of coats, see how you like it. If not, look, nothing wrong with a bit of Beltan Green or Athonian Camo Shade if you want that slightly darker, darker tone. I just like using blue to wash greens. It just makes your recesses and things pop just a little bit more. So let's get this mixed up again. Plastic plate and get it all on. It's going to be an all over wash. All right, I've got all that sorted out. I've just got an older brush here. I've got it all mixed in two to one as I said, and now we're just gonna put it all over. So everywhere where we've done the screen, we're just gonna slap it on. If you don't like this effect, or you think it could be darker, well, hit it with a second coat. I probably will do two coats of this. Just, that's how I like doing it. All right, just get this all over. Make sure it doesn't pull anywhere, like, in the eyes here, for instance, what you do is take some, make sure your brush is not that thing, and just pull it away from where you need to. So I'm going to get this done all over, and we'll come back, and we'll see. Alright, and that is what it looks like after you get all that done. And you can see, we can still see the little bit of highlights at the bottom there, and across the face and things like that. So now we're going to take some Ogren Camo and we're just going to apply it to the very edges of the model just to highlight some of those features like the tips of the ears, the lips, the knuckles and just a little bit on the most raised areas of the muscles but there's also, um, what do you call them, veins showing through in certain spots so we're going to give that a bit of a highlight as well. And that's what it looks like after you go over it. And yeah, as you can see, all those features pop out now and looking really good from a distance. So what we're going to do now is grab a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade because what he does, he does have a little wound in the middle of his forehead and around this metal plate. So we're just going to hit that and make it look a little bit sore. You know, make it stand out just a little bit more. And we don't have to highlight it or anything like that. Reichland Flesh Shade will do majority of the work for us. So we just wanted to make it a little bit more bruised looking, a bit sore. You don't have to do this. I enjoyed doing it because it actually did uh, stand out a little bit more. And now we're going to hit up black. So what we're going to do is we're going to do things like your fingernails. We're going to do the pants, all the places we want dark metal. Um and things like the that chain mail on the back as you can see here i've also done the shoulder pads knee pads because they're going to be a slightly different black uh they're going to be a blue black rather than a metallic black so now we're going to highlight the pants we're going to use some mechanica standard gray we're just going to make the pants look a bit distressed a bit worn and because they're really well hidden you don't really have to do a lot of highlighting on that and we're going to highlight that little bit of cloth on the front. And for all the blue-black, we're going to take some staggered on scale green, and we're just going to hit the shoulder pads, the knee pads, um, and, the te and the little teeth bits and things like that, just to make them stand out a little bit more. Um, it's really easy, just a nice subtle highlight there. 
they're pretty well defined on where you can and can't do that. So as you see here, we're just going to hit the raised areas with that Mechanicus. There's not a lot of raised details, just these little bits in the pants. There's some stitching down the side. Um, you don't have to be neat with this. Like, we're going to hit it with a wash later on anyway. It's going to hide all that. And if you are a bit messy, it's just going to look like a bit of a pair of pants that have been done, you know, over time. And doing the metal is the same thing. There's little rivets everywhere. Make sure you grab them. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. It's just going to look like scratching and battle damage. You don't have to be neat at this point. Um, and a thicker highlight here is probably going to help with the later um, edge highlighting that we're going to do further on. And make sure you get all the teeth as well. And that's what it looks like all done. Um, it's very, very subtle, as you can see. Um, as you can see with the pants, it went a little bit overboard. But, you know, what are you going to do? Bit behind that leg there, just make it up as you go. Um, but as you can see, that staggered on stale green is really subtle. Um, yeah. So now... We're going to take some Thunderhawk Blue, which I somehow managed to get all over my fingers, um, somehow. And we're just going to highlight up the rest of the metal over the, the Staggered on Stale Green. Um, not as much, but it's going to make it pop um, a bit more. So we're going to do a finer edge highlight, so we can still have a little bit of that Staggered on sitting in the back in the recesses as you can see here i'm barely hitting the edges um, just to help that pop bit of transition it's going to look really nice all right now we're going to come in with a bit of lead belt and we're going to do the majority of the metal at this point with that so we're going to do things like the chain mail pretty much the entire axe blade there over the black as well it's just going to make a little bit of transition those little horn things of metal, and then we're going to do an overbrush of that back there. Now, an overbrush is more like a highlight, uh, a dry brush, just not as, but you've got a little bit more paint on, and you're not going back and forth, you're kind of just dragging downwards, um, just to highlight, as you can see me doing there. I'm not going back and forth, I'm going in one direction. And that's the metal base coated so far and as you can see there's a little bit of subtle differences between the metal you might notice on the axe head there that I haven't been the neatest that was deliberate because it looks pretty beat up and worn um, but yeah so just hit all those metals everything looks great I did the earring and that little face bit but yeah so there you can see the axe I've gone in a downwards motion I haven't been neat at all. I wanted a little bit more scratching and some of that darker stuff to show through. And then we're going to highlight all that now with a little bit of Iron Breaker. I like this colour. It's great. It's going to make some of that highlight come through. So we're going to add some more scratches to the axe head just before we add a watch to it all. We're just going to hit those... You can see the raised bumps and areas on that already. So that's what we're going to highlight mainly. Um, and then we're going to hit the back with just a little bit of a highlight around the edges of everything else just to get that stuff popping and looking really nice. So yeah, now that's all done. You can see it there. It does stand out very subtly, but it's there and the wash will definitely help bring all that out. We're going to add now. So we're going to grab some Agrax Earthshade just to make this thing look a bit more dirty, a bit more worn. Agrax Earthshade is perfect for this next step so just grab a brush doesn't matter what size it is be careful of the skin obviously um, but yeah we're just gonna add it to everything now for the dark metal as you can see there I got some Bellisarnum gray contrast paint this is going to be for that black metal you see on the knife and you see on the uh, the big axe now that that's all taken care of and sorted you can see everything's got that nice grimy kind of feel on the metal it looks really worn and old and been through hell and back exactly what i wanted to and the black metal has come out nice i was actually quite surprised but now we're going to finish off everything with a nice highlight so thunderhawk blue just for the blue black metal and then we're going to highlight that a small amount with for, for Rigian gray Ugh. 
Now, for the metals, we're going to go back in with some Iron Breaker. Just hits the most raised points, trying to leave it dark and grimy, but just where, you know, top parts wouldn't get so much grime on there. And then, for an extreme highlight, we're going to go in with some Storm Host Silver, and that's kind of just going to be on those little edges of the the points of the axe, the a little bit of the chainmail, and the rivets on the face plates and things like that, and a tiniest amount on that back chain section. And there it is, done. All the highlighting and things like that. Now you can see that metal sticks right out. I made a mistake, and I'm showing it on screen. I really don't like it, but if Stormhost is a bit too much, what you can do is just go back over with some Agrax Earthshade, and that's essentially what I did do, <laughs> um, just to tone it all the way back down again. Ah, oh, great. Just throw the mud all around, why don't you, idiot? But yes, a bit of Agrax, that'll tone that back down, it'll make it blend a lot more, but, you know, mistakes, you learn, you adjust, you adapt, you overcome. So, the next part. We're going to tackle things like the wood, the leather straps around like the arms, the weapons and things like that. And for that we're going to hit it with some dry eyed bark. For the leather strap, and then highlight that with some Gawthor Brown. Oh, I'm going all over the place today, I am sorry. Um, and then we're going to hit that with some Agrax Earthshade. It just makes all that stick together nice. Agrax Earthshade is going to be a recurring wash. Um, after that, Rakarth Flesh, that's going to be for all our strappy bits and leather. Because snake bite Leather is going to go over that just to make that pop and highlight that up. It looks really nice. It's my favourite way of doing it. Um, yeah. Alright, so the next bit after we do all that, we are going to tackle our little bone section. So for the lower section of the bone, I like to come in with a little bit of Gawthor Brown, just because I do enjoy it. Um, and then over that, we're going to do our normal bone colours. Now, you can come in with something like Wraith Bone, um, which you can see there. That's usually my go-to. Bit of Skeleton Horde over that. Um, but also, when I'm doing bones, if Shanty Bone comes in play as well. I like to do a gradient when everything's wet, kind of like a wet blend kind of style, and then hit it all with some snake bite, um, Skeleton Horde, not Snake Bite Leather. And, yeah. Cool. So, once it's all dry, you should have something that looks like this. So, as you can see, skeleton hold over the bone, and snake bite leather over the straps. It's given these really nice effects. Now, I'm not going to highlight anything to do with the leather, because I like the way that looks already. Um, the wood's looking good, but the bones, I just want to brighten up those tips and the top sections just a little bit more, especially on the back. Just down the back here. So what I'm going to do with that, I know it's going to sound a bit weird, but essentially for the bones, I'm going to take a little bit of pallid witch flesh, and I mean a little bit, and I'm kind of going to do like a small dry brush just on the top parts, just to make them a little bit, as you can see, just kind of a bit more like that, just over the things here. Now you can also use something like um, Screaming Skull to do that too. Um, do both, Screaming Skull and then a little bit of Pallid Witch Flash, but that's just me. But as it comes down to the leather, I'm happy with the way that's come out and looks, and I'm going to leave it at that. So, I'm going to go hit all these, and I'll come back in a sec. I should mention, I'm using a really ratty brush to do this next bit, because I don't want it looking super neat or clean. I kind of want some striations. I'm not a big fan of sitting there and trying to do lines all the way down the bone. Bone I've never actually seen look that way. So I like to use a really ratty brush for this and just do it that way. And I'm also got, this is super thin down. This is like really, really watery. Um, and I've taken most of it off my brush just so when it dries, it's super opaque. But that's about it. And I'll do the skull as well across the face, just being careful of the metal work there. And...
just like that. Um, <clears throat> and then for the teeth, I want them darker. So I'm going to hit them with a bit of Agrax Earth Shade just to bring them all the way down. I'll come back when this is done. Okay, so if you're not happy with the way it looks, or it's not blending, go over it, hit it with a bit of thin down Agrax Earth Shade, and that'll bring it in, or again, thin down some um, skele uh, Skeleton Horde, and away you go. Because as you can see here, I've screwed up the face a little bit, but that's okay, because now I'm going to go, because all the rest of the bone that I've done, I like the look of. Just me. But here on the face, I've kind of screwed up the jaw a bit, so I'm going to go back over that. But I've got some Agrax Earthshade here, and I'm just going to hit the teeth. Like so. And I'm just going to hit that section there, just to dial it down. I'm also going to do the teeth in there. Um, if I want, I'll probably do a second coat on the teeth to really darken them down. Alright, now we got all that settled, we're going to tackle the very last couple of details on here before we move on to the armour. So, there is some Stormcast stuff on here. you got that little skull there. you got this one here, and you got the bit in the hand. So we're going to do the gold, and then we're going to do the red. So the, for the gold, we're going to start off with some Retributor armor. And we're going to do a little bit of highlight with Auric armor. And then we're going to wash that, because I want to dull it down like it's been around for a while, with some Agarax Earthshade. Um, this one on the head, though, I'm going to say he's just ripped that off. So I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade instead wash it over that and then we're going to re-highlight it to bring it and make it a little bit less like it's been a while since he's done it unlike these which I want to have a bit more like they've been there for a bit and a bit dirtier so that will do a bit different so yeah let's get cracking all right so just a little bit of retributor armor here um I'm just like I said you're going to hit here being careful to preserve the surrounding details down here and then for the bit in the hand we're going to be really careful um, coming from different angles just to make sure that we actually get that without touching the skin all right so two thin coats of gold later we got that thing and I realized I screwed up so I actually missed a finger and the back of his hand so I'm fixing that up at the same time anyway while the gold is drying we're going to tackle the red now, red, real easy. We're going to go the three. Mephiston red. Evil Sun Scarlet. Wash of um, Agrax Earthshade. Not typically the wash I would use for it. Um, I would use Caribou Crimson, but I don't have that with me. And then Wild Rider Red. Just because, obviously, if you just rip the head off, it's going to be a little bit dirtier tie it in even though I'm making a fresh head um, but these are the three I'm going to go with and yeah so I'll show you that okay my fist and reds on and it's still wet now I'm a bit weird when it comes to doing hair and plumes like this um, especially with Stormcast I leave mine wet still and hit it with the next highlight, so Evil Sun Scarlet. Just ties things in a little bit nicer, it just blends a little bit nicer, and that's just what I found. The other way, let it dry, hit all the highest parts, and then wash it. But in the meantime, this is how I'm doing it. So, a really nice, fine tip on your brush, you don't want much paint. And then we're just gonna touch the toppest parts. And that's it. And what'll happen is, the two colors will just nicely blend together and just come out just a little bit more natural looking for hair even though I know this is a crest and not real hair but still just how I like to do it you don't have to follow exactly that but yeah easy enough now I'm just using the side of my brush to get all the the high bits. Just like that. Alright, so now I'm going to highlight the gold. We're going to take some auric gold. Um, 
be careful with this color it is super bright and it doesn't go on very easily um, but it does pop out so before we wash these with some Agarac Stir Shade we're just going to hit this just on the absolute top part here so just on the very top part of that and then the nose and then these little side bits there just to have them pop out a little bit down here it's going to be a bit easier we're going to hit the forehead the nose the eyebrows and a little bit underneath that little bit there but that's it we're not going to be touching them very much with this here we're going to do the crest we're going to do the side bit there and just a little bit at the top and that's it on that one boom okay so time for some agrax earth shade now the gold's all dry so we're just going to cover the gold bang 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 now i have noticed that there is a little bit of a strap that runs over the nose here holding the skull in gold skull in place um when i'm done i'm just going to come in and just touch that with a little bit of lead belcher and that's about it especially down but that's the only one i found so far as for the hair as you can see i'm going to come in and actually um use some Reichel Flesh Aid. I decided on that just to go all the way down. So yeah, back in a sec. Oh, and Reichel Flesh Aid on this skull here too. And then we're going to re-highlight it with some Auric Gold just on the top highest edges possible. All right, so that's the gold done. As you can see, bang, bang, there and there. Um, yeah, nice little highlights already on the on the gold you can hit that again with some liberator gold or some more auric gold if you want to um hair's nice and done um i'm going to just hit the little tips and the highest point with some wild rider red use very small amounts of this um turns out there's a stone in the hair i don't understand that either and then we can get on to doing the armor finally so Last little detail to do, Wild Rider Red. All right, so Wild Rider Red, it's a very, very bright color. I really like it a lot for most things. And we're literally just going to thin it down a lot and just catch all the ends like that. And if you need to, just brush it out like that. Um, I'm going to do the very top and highest points of the hair. I'm not going to go too crazy because this can get out of hand, but just anywhere I feel would be the lightest part of this. And just like that, I'm not going too overboard with it, and just keeping it nice and to a point there kind of a thing. Um, I just realized there's a little bit of a thing there. Um, probably just run some straight black over that. Oh well, what are you going to do? All right, so. Now we've got to move on to doing, not what I've been avoiding, but probably going to be, in some people's, worst bit. That's why we leave it to last. Mainly because now we can be clean and neat, and if we touch anything, we can fix it up really easy, rather than trying to do it the other way around. But yes, we're going to do yellows. Um, typical yellow fashion, we're going to start off with some Avalon Sunset all over. Then we're going to highlight that with some... Uriel yellow just along the edges and any rivets and do the same thing we did with the black pretty much Then because I wish it to be absolutely a bit more dirty than normal We're going to come in with some Agrax Earthshade Thin down with some Lamian Medium About two to one And then we're going to highlight that up again with some Uriel yellow But then we're going to really highlight it with some Flash Kits yellow And then we might add some battle damage to it so, yeah, I'll come back once I've done the Avalanche Sunset. Yellow. Avalanche Sunset. Now, most people will avoid painting yellow at all cost. I find the only way to get good at painting a colour is to just do it. And this is not my first rodeo with painting something yellow. I do have 
a house hawk shroud knight um, painted yellow and black um, which was a lot of fun now this is going to take more than one coat I've got this pretty thin down um, I don't know how many coats this is going to take to get good coverage but slow and steady to try and do it um, but yeah just take it easy be patient do as many coats as you want as you know till you get to the desired coverage you want and when I'm done I'll come back <laughs> okay um, yellow's done um, guys look it's yellow that's why I did this thing last it's easier to clean up any color you get yellow on than the other way around um, but I've done maybe four thin coats all over this and before I play my two to one agrax all over this I'm actually going to do a little bit of highlighting just on the edges and the rivets like we did with the black and everything else and that I'm going to do with some Euro yellow now I want to add a little bit of flair to this I'm not going to do very much of it but <clears throat> I'm going to add some flames just to the feet like you see on the box hang on yep just like you see on the box um real thin brush real small brush guys make sure you've got a really good tip on your brush and we're just going to go over it with a little bit of a bad and black now you can put flames wherever you like it doesn't just have to be on the feet you can do it i might even do it a little bit here on the cod piece um i'm not going to do much but that's pretty much where i'm going to go and then yeah so i'll come back well actually i'll show you the first couple of highlights with the Euro yellow because it's a super thin cover color as well and yeah so give me a sec now it's Euro yellow so it's thin I've thinned it down with a little bit of water I don't have much on my brush and just like before I am just gonna touch real small sections of this being very careful just to touch the edges so I don't really want to go too overboard with this as you can see I'm turning the model and I'm just running my brush very carefully along the edges here turn it upside down if I have to and even if I'm gonna put some black flames over it I'm still gonna edge highlight with the yellow on those sections first but yeah, as you can see, that just makes it stand out just a little bit more. I'm very carefully going to find the ridges. Like down the center here. And I'm very carefully just going to brace my hands and drag my brush downwards. Um, rather than trying to go up, you just got a little bit more control that way. So I'm going to do that and show you the after results. Ugh. And that... Is what a euro yellow highlight looks like um it's easier than you think guys just time patient nice tip on your brush and i know it looks really subtle but once we put the wash on it'll really pop out now i also like to say that i'm recording this before all the new contrast stuff come out and there is an iron jaws yellow and i'll probably be picking that up because yeah so that's with the first highlight. Now you can see more of the detail pop out and all that. Now I'm going to do the little, like I said, I'm probably not going to be the best at this, but the little, the little flames on the feet before applying the wash. That way, when we put the wash on, it all ties together nice and neatly. So let's get cracking on that. Okay, can't believe I'm going to try doing this on camera. Now I have a very thin down black, very little on my brush. And essentially I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to draw... A little flamey squiggle. Just like that. And am I going to fill it in? Next one. And that's essentially what I'm going to do, fill it all in, and get going. 
I'll come back when I have that all sorted. Now, if you do screw this up, start yellow again. <laughs> Don't worry about stripping your miniatures, guys. Just, you know, Avalon Sunset, and then re-highlight, and we'll come back. Alright, I can't do flames, but that's my best attempt at it. If you're not good at it, why well, don't give it a shot anyway, you never know. Um, I tidied it up, not very well, but I'll hide all that with uh, doing the wash, which we'll do now. Alright, so we're going to do an all-over wash of Lamia Medium mixed in with some Agrax Air Shade. So, two to one. Um, just because, yeah, I don't want to kill most of the yellow and have to redo this i just want a very subtle shading on this after we've done that edge highlighting already it's pretty much popping as much as i like but i just want a little bit darker so that's how we're going to do this plus it adds a little bit more dirty grime so yeah that is all washed and you can see the depth it's given it's tied everything in i like it um and our highlights have now stuck out a lot more so there that was a really good idea. Alright, so now what are we gonna do? Well we're gonna screw it all up probably by hitting it with a bit of flash skits yellow. And I'm talking about really tiny amounts, really super thin down so it dries fairly transparent, but we're gonna hit nothing more than the absolute sharpest corners and all those rivets and things like that. So Screw that up, uh, but just like that. So, really, the highest points around everything, and I'm going to do that, and then, yeah, I'll show you the finished results, and then we can start working on the base. Yeah, just little tiny highlights here and there, just to make out some more things just pop, just a little bit more, and the rivets, and that's it. All right, and I also forgot to paint the eye, so I just put a little dot of red, so I like red. Now we're going to do the base. First, we're going to tackle this thing here, the rock. Usually, I would have cut them off, but oh well. So, I'm just going to paint that real quick with a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey. Hit the edges with some Admin Grey. Wash the whole thing with some Bellisarnum Grey. And then, we'll deal with how to base this. Now, for me personally, I'm just going to do what I always do with my basing these days, which is really lazy, which is just going to hit it with some Geek Gaming Fast Drying Basing Glue and we're going to dip it in and for this one I decided to use my uh, Fields of New Zealand because I've not used this on much of anything and I thought it would be a nice cool little way of doing it on something like this so let's get a crack all right and there we go um yeah I got my really crappy light box out guys I'm really sorry to finish off a video like that but I'm very pleased with how this has turned out as you can see, I did my basing, I added some little tufts, the little rock got painted really crappily, but, you know, it all ties in. I've even painted the base rim there black. Um, but yeah, there's his face there with his teeth. I really like this model. I, funny enough, actually enjoyed painting yellow and having that highlight stick out across the back. I really like this model. I'm sorry this video took so long, guys, um, but there's a lot of details on these things and I wanted to cover everything. On my next one, I'll make sure to pick something simpler. If you've got a suggestion of what you might like to see, leave it down below. I'll be really interested to see what you think I might enjoy painting next. Um, but yeah, so thanks for sticking it out. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, I'm sorry, but still, if you can chuck us a thumbs up, that'd be great. You know, doesn't really harm you in any way. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, hit subscribe. Um, I plan on doing more of these over time. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And one day I'll figure out how to do these a bit better. But yeah. Rawr.